Hey, what's up YouTube? It's ICU and today we're going to talk about iOS and jailbreaking. Now there's a lot that's gone on recently in the realm of jailbreaking and in the broader realm of iOS. I'm going to share with you guys only the important information and what you absolutely need to know. So with that said, let's go ahead and get straight into today's video. I'm just going to launch up Safari, go to Apple's developer portal, and you will notice that iOS 10.3 beta 2 was seeded earlier this week to registered developers on Monday, and the corresponding public beta was actually released yesterday for those enrolled in the program. But you'll notice it says February 6th with a build number of 14 E5239E. So that's quite a long build number, of course, suggesting that it is going to go through a number of subsequent beta releases before we get the GM seed, and inevitably it is released to the public. So iOS 10.3 is still going to be in beta stages for a while, and it does bring a number of new features to the table, primarily a brand new option called Find My AirPods available inside of the Find My iPhone app once downloaded, and it also switches over to Apple File System or APFS for short which is intelligently optimized for flash storage, which of course is what all iOS devices are based on, and also SSDs for Macs. So some pretty exciting stuff to see full information on iOS 10.3. Definitely check out my video covering the first beta. It will be linked in your cards now as well as down below in the description. Now, as far as jailbreaking is concerned, because believe it or not, iOS 10.3 of course plays a role in jailbreaking. Of course, you can still jailbreak iOS 10 for all 64-bit devices, except really the iPhone 7. And the reason for that, you can kind of still jailbreak the iPhone 7, but the reason why I excluded it is because you can jailbreak on up to iOS 10.2 on all other devices. On the iPhone 7, you can only jailbreak up to iOS 10.1.1 using an older solution that is expected to be updated, but iOS 10.2 support will not be added for the iPhone 7 and iPhone 7 Plus. Again, all other 64-bit devices are jailbreakable on up to iOS 10.2, and it's a pretty darn stable jailbreak. So you can also check out my cards for my tutorial on that, as well as down below in the description, you will find a link there as well. If you are on iOS 10.2, definitely jailbreak now while you still have the opportunity to do so. And of course, on iOS 10.2.1, you will not be able to jailbreak. The primary reason for that is because the extremely powerful sandbox to kernel exploit is patched inside of iOS 10.2.1. In fact, 10.2.1 was released prior to the release of the jailbreak, meaning they essentially used the exploits that were already known, already patched, and that way they could kind of bypass one of the steps and actually release an iOS 10 jailbreak. So that's awesome, but what about moving forward? We still haven't had a jailbreak that supports the current public firmware. And while Yalu, the iOS 10.2 jailbreak, was available while iOS 10.2 was still being signed, again, most individuals are going to want a jailbreak moving forward onto iOS 10.3 because it does offer a number of new features and there will inevitably be individuals who either mess up their jailbreak and are forced into having to restore to a higher firmware or who come onto the scene later. Maybe they simply didn't know about the iOS 10 jailbreak because it was released in such a strange way, meaning it was actually released in alpha stages and then moved through to beta and that's essentially where we're at right now. Well, see, Pangu is still on the jailbreak scene. Just because they haven't released anything and because they've been quiet for a while doesn't mean they've gone anywhere. Quite the contrary. As a matter of fact, every single development team remains silent before they release a jailbreak. They don't tease what they're working on. They simply drop jailbreak utilities. It happened every single time, even before Pangu and Taiji were talking back during the days of the iPhone dev team, followed of course by the chronic dev team and then the dream team being the evaders. It's a pattern that repeats itself that will continue to repeat itself moving forward into the future. Now, because we do have an iOS 10.2 jailbreak and because it is so stable, we're likely not going to see anything from Pangu for iOS 10.2.1. So avoid 10.2.1 at absolutely all costs. Unfortunately, you cannot downgrade back to iOS 10.2 or restore to it if you're on a lower firmware, simply because Apple's no longer signing it. They stopped signing it quite a while ago at this point. So what that means is that we're going to have to look to the future to be able to jailbreak, hopefully iOS 10.2. Three. Now, at this point, Pangu sites have likely shifted. We know almost definitively, just based on what has happened, or rather what hasn't happened, that they're not going to target iOS 10.2.1. 
10.2.x because they haven't released anything for it. At this stage, they probably know well and good what iOS 10.3 patches, if it patches anything that they're working on. If it doesn't, then of course they're going to hold off and wait to release something because we already have a solution for iOS 10.2 and the vast majority of us seeking to jailbreak were able to do so successfully because 10.2 was still being signed when the jailbreak dropped. So that's kind of where things sit as of now. We are looking to Pangu for a solution to be able to jailbreak iOS 10.3 in the foreseeable future. Now it is going to take a while because iOS 10.3 is going to go through a number of betas, but at least we have a solution. Most of us are jailbroken now. If you have yet to jailbreak and you are on iOS 10.2, I highly recommend doing it sooner rather than later just to lock in your jail broken state and to ensure that you can stay jailbroken. Of course, you just need to remain on iOS 10.2. It's as simple as that and avoid any questionable or unknown tweaks that haven't been updated to include support for iOS 10 through 10.2. So of course, check out my channel for the latest information related to jailbreaking. I will also have a playlist in your cards now as well as down below in the description that goes into some of these other updates and we'll have more updates in the future if you are watching this video at a later date. You can also definitely check out the top tweaks video that my friend Tony did for the channel. I definitely recommend watching through that if you're looking for things to do once jailbroken that are stable, supported on iOS 10 and will not cause you to have to restore your device. So guys, those are pretty much the basic things I want to talk about. I also need to give you guys a safety warning and something that we can look forward to if we are already jailbroken. So safety warning being that there are individuals who are passing along different IPA of the iOS 10.2 jailbreak that include embedded certificates that essentially do not have to force you into reinstalling the application every seven days using your own self-signed method, meaning that they are signing it themselves, like I said, using that embedded certificate, and it is incredibly simple to embed malware into the IPA, and some of these sources that individuals are starting to install have been tampered with. Do not install anything outside of the official jailbreak, guys because I'm telling you right now, it is incredibly simple to install something that could compromise the security of your device and put your information at jeopardy. With that being said, we have something to look forward to that will essentially eliminate that problem entirely, and you will not have to plug your device into your computer and reinstall the application using Cydia Impactor every seven days, because Sorik himself, the creator of Cydia, and of course Cydia Impactor, let us all know that he is working on a solution that will essentially be able to resign and reinstall the application in the background on your device at a random period sometime before that seven day self-signed certificate is up. That way it doesn't appear as though it is a bot for Apple's servers, but essentially it will just constantly re-sign it when it starts to near the end of that seven day certificate. And that way you will basically have a perma jailbreak without the need to connect your device to your computer and reinstall it with Impactor. There are a lot of solutions that are being tossed around. It's unknown whether something that elegant will be released anytime soon, but they are working on it. And that is the end goal. I'll let you guys know if and when that happens. Be sure to subscribe if you have yet to, of course, click that subscribe button below next to my channel name and just like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter for even more frequent updates. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.